can things like meditation or working on your mental health can they affect bowel movements uh, directly uh, nicotine is a is a very interesting uh, chemical increasing fiber in your diet increases your bowel movement quality correct what are the foods that reduce bowel movement quality but now we know what is the next pandemic which is going to be antibiotic resistant bacteria why is pooping so connected to peace of mind so the next time you have a good bowel movement you should hear symphony playing right. in the background la 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 <laughs> welcome to another episode of the sid warrior podcast we are doing a special series called as the consult where we call upon other specialists from the medical community and talk about one interesting topic and today i am so excited to have dr paul who's come all the way from california to our little studio to talk to us about the gut dr paul pleasure to have you here how are you good very good thank you so much for having me so good to see you in person likewise mm-hmm. i've been following your work for almost a year now uh, i don't know if i told you this but a few months ago i was doing a podcast for um, apollo hospitals huh. and uh, they sent me a reference about how a podcast should be and they send me your podcast don't follow this <laughs> <laughs> except this method any method is okay <laughs> no it was really good and i and i really love the way that you you know you talk to your guests you um, you communicate the, even the way you teach uh-huh. okay so right from medical college i've always had a special fondness for doctors who can do other things uh-huh. Uh-huh. the doctors who can play sports doctors who do stand up comedy like <laughs> yourself <laughs> and doctors who teach well so you are like that complete package thank oh, you so much oh that's so right okay thank you thank you people call me psychotic but that's a different story <laughs> <laughs> but never to your face i hope <laughs> so tell me you are a gastroenterologist right in california uh-huh. how did you get into content creation um so it's an accident okay so it was an accident so i always had this knack of uh, uh i th- i think stand up comedy mm-hmm. you know thing i because i liked it people who made other people laugh yeah. i absolutely got attracted towards it oh why can't i do it yeah. um so there is this uh, debate show in tamil called patti mandram where you know okay. they have this two different sides and there is a judge and mm-hmm. then they always talk in a funny way and yeah. then all the audience will laugh and i said i want to be that person um uh, but i went into medicine and i all i could talk to my patient <laughs> So I was like okay it will come out sometime so always in my presentations yeah. wherever I do I try to infuse some kind of humor yeah. so in covid um uh, one of the non profit organization wanted me to do a video about covid yeah. so I did a video of a 10 minute video and I sent it to them and they said that you know this doesn't look professional at all it looks like stand up comedy huh. uh, they didn't like it they didn't like it oh uh, I, i cannot put this on the website i said do i spent like you know half an uh, three to four hours doing this uh, what do i do and he said you know you go to youtube upload it everybody has a gmail account can have a youtube channel so i uploaded it and that went uh, viral just because of the timing of the covid right because two weeks before you was had it and two weeks later india had it right, right. so everybody was like panicking about it and my video was a little bit on a lighter side yeah. so that's what the that's start of the content creation <laughs> wow so like a lot of other content creators you owe your start of the journey also to the pandemic ha pandemic right so oh. that was the same for me and i always think of how obviously the pandemic was such a horrible thing to happen mm. but sometimes how something so unexpected correct can pull you out of your comfort zone and make you do things that otherwise you would not have i would have never even thought about it so you would be a full fledged gastroenterologist in california correct. i would just be practicing neurology correct. and we would have never met met exactly <laughs> is destiny it's destiny <laughs> there are many things about the gut that i'm very interested in okay because uh, the more i read about neurology the more i understand that oh brain and gut but the one thing i feel we should talk about today which is not been talked about much is about pooping <laughs> my Now, favorite topic <laughs> yes because people across the world fight about many different things right okay the human race is deeply divided politics religion gender everything but the one thing that everyone can agree on is that if you poop well uh-huh. you are happy correct so why is that why is pooping so connected to peace of mind and uh how can someone how do you know 
if somebody is not pooping well what is the what is the reason for that right so uh, you know the best example is my mom okay. my mom whenever she has any fever or anything yeah. like that she she'll call me and she said that you know don't worry too much about me because i'm pooping well right so there is this inherent thing that you know whenever you have a good ball moment yeah you achieve something on that day yeah uh, and the sense of achievement gives a sense of reassurance <laughs> <laughs> that the day has started with purpose with a purpose uh uh-huh. you were born in this world with a purpose to achieve things you achieve things <laughs> so uh but if you look at the gastroenterological anatomy the formation of a bowel movement if it is normal that there are so many things that has to go right hmm. example right from the start of the anal sphincter muscle correct the anal sphincter muscle which is the sphincter muscle right at the junction of the anus and yeah. only when you open up yeah then the ball movement comes what a good topic to talk to you about in this amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> on that note hit the like button <laughs> please subscribe so that he can prescribe <laughs> <laughs> so uh so this anal sphincter muscle has to open up hmm. at the right moment at the time that you want yes at the right location yes correct yes if in nothing is more important in your body than the anal sphincter muscle yeah. <laughs> not opening when it has to or opening when it shouldn't shouldn't exactly mm. and then that has the opening as you know being a neurologist yeah. there are so many neuromuscular connection that has to go right yeah. multiple muscles around that area the nerves are playing the area the connection has to be exactly spot on muscles yes. has to relax and then it has to come out yes okay so that is why the age old saying is if you have a good ball movement everything else is okay okay <laughs> sometimes when i read about the number of things that has to go right for that one moment to happen uh-huh. i feel that synchronized sim- swimming and all is nothing <laughs> this is the most complex beautiful thing that the human body can do correct correct because not only does it have to open at the right time but everything before that also has to happen in such a synchronized way the poop has to form in the gut all of that absorption and everything should have happened by then the peristalsis should bring it to that to point, point and everything has to be coordinated that one system will hand it over to the next system until it is out correct correct the interesting thing is that the part of the peristalsis and all that is going inside is not under our control hmm but the sphincter itself has a voluntary nerve that you can control that you can control uh, god has created in such a way yes that uh, it is not completely in our hands correct but it is a little, little bit in bit. our control so this dance between voluntary and involuntary it really comes out when it comes to pooping right. <laughs> and and uh, you know sometimes in patients yeah. what we see is that you lose the voluntary control right ha uh, and that is where we actually say that oh you know the connection is not working not working mm. there is a disease called ibs correct irritable bowel syndrome mm. tell us a little bit about it what is it so irritable bowel syndrome in layman terms it just your stomach and your intestine is very sensitive okay okay basically it looks like a teenage girl or right. she just attained puberty lots of hormonal balances are happening and then you know she's not talking to the mom talking to the dad she thinks that whatever she doing is the right thing mm. okay and uh, that is the start of the spectrum okay irritable so basically your intestines are extremely sensitive sensitive to uh, to the food that you are eating okay uh, or to the stress that you are experiencing through huh. um so that is where we talked about this brain gut connection and uh, that's why we call the gut as the second brain because there are 100 million neurons 100 million neurons connecting the intestines right from the oral cavity yeah. all the way up to the anal orifice yeah. and this is a highway mm-hmm. that connects from the gut all the way up to the brain yeah. uh, and this is a two way communication yeah. it's a connection has to go from here to this and this has to come this way yeah. and it has to come as a very synchronized melodious orchestra like ilayaraja 
it's a it's a symphony symphony you so, cannot do yo yo honey sing <laughs> <laughs> so that 30 band orchestra correct all working together is what regular bowel movement looks like exactly and that is why people achieve something guys yes. if you have a good bowel movement there is a purpose in your life you should be privileged and blessed <laughs> to have good bowel movement absolutely right absolutely so the next time you have a good bowel movement you should hear symphony playing right. in the background la 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 <laughs> <laughs> or like a victory march victory march like correct interstellar final right yeah. <laughs> maybe that may be too much <laughs> in ibs one of the things that uh, my patients also complain about is that their bowel movements are very uncertain hmm they may leave the house hmm. thinking that oh i don't want to go hmm. and they will reach the railway station hmm. and they suddenly want to go correct and they want to go so badly that they can't wait correct. now they'll have to use a public restroom correct and some patients say that uh, they don't even shop on the street they will prefer going to a mall correct because there's a restroom there correct. so they plan their whole lives around whether there's a restroom available correct that sounds so stressful correct. why does this happen um, there was a study that they did comparing the quality of life being compromised by ibs versus cancer patients okay and the quality of life compromise was even more worse in ibs patients compared to cancer patients wow because that how bad it affects their daily functionality can you imagine you know going out always looking out for a bathroom ha huh. and then to a point that sometimes at least you know you have some time to get to the bathroom sometimes there is fecal accidents that happens where the voluntary muscle doesn't control at all and the anal sphincter just relaxes in public in public okay. and that is so embarrassing and many patients come to me and then they've literally cried and then they say please do something about this right. okay and uh, you know the the uh, the problem even though we say that over oh, no, ibs is nothing and all those thing but the outcome of the disease is more severe than the actual cancer patients yeah. outcome yeah. in terms of daily functionality yeah. and uh, why this happens is because this thing is not talking to this thing properly and it is basically the highway there is a traffic block right the uh, brain is not talking to the gut and so there is a discom there's a miscommunication there's a divorce that's like happening. a divorce mm. yeah you know we don't know who started the divorce <laughs> brain would be like oh it's your problem you know you didn't communicate me first and the guy is like you know i told you already you were listening to your mother <laughs> <laughs> doctor all your stories seem to be based on some personal experience <laughs> <laughs> please don't create any problem in my family <laughs> this is just an example <laughs> <laughs> while the couple knows that they are going through this problem right. the the larger issue of ibs was that none of their friends believed them ha. nobody else correct. thought that there is an actual issue correct so from the outside because everything looks good, good. Mm. like oh you have a happy family kids mm. so oh, everything is okay mm. they think no no you don't have any issue mm. similarly with ibs because your tests are normal mm. none of your blood markers are there mm. not, not everything seems to be okay correct they thought that you are faking it correct or you are just trying to get attention correct um and this is something that you can ignore and it will go away correct so what has changed in the last few years decades so, so now you know the main problem with ibs is that you know there is no clear cut test that i can do mm. and then say say look at this guy this is what is going on because this highway yeah. is very difficult to test ha ah, right you know for example your arm is not working you do a nerve conduction study and then you say that okay there's a problem yeah. okay and there is no study to conduct this assess the conduction of this brain gate connection correct right so it's a very difficult objective way to say the patient that is ibs that you have ibs yeah. and uh, most of the times what happens is even doctors discard ibs as a disease yeah. and then they say that oh it's all in your brain Okay, it's all in your brain. Go fix your brain. Uh, go sleep well. Uh, it'll, uh, which is true. Sleeping also helps. But more than that, we need uh, 
uh now we are as a community medical community ourselves we are understanding that ibs is a real disease right uh, and we need to get to the bottom of it yeah. how to improve the connection between the brain and the gut and the gut mm. so it's very interesting because a lot of my patients with ibs mm. usually come with a different problem mm. like migraine ha huh. or anxiety Great. and when i ask them that is everything okay with your gut ha huh. because i always ask this uh, question uh, uh, uh. then they will open up uh, and say that no, i am no. having these 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 bloating, problems uh, bloating uh, urgency, urgency constipation correct sometimes they have urgency and constipation and so they are so confused correct okay, do i want to go or not go? not go right so then i have realized that with migraine also these things can come correct so do you think that there is more of a need for different specialists to talk to each other saying that you know what my patient can come to you and your patient can come to me <laughs> so there is a division in us it's yeah. called neurogastroenterology ah huh. huh. where there's a separate division right. where we assess every you remember that i talked about the highway yes. we talked about every exit of the highway ha mm. huh. okay from brain what is happening from brain to the esophagus yeah. from the oral cavity and then esophagus and then stomach so everything neuromotility neurogastroenterology we are identifying it as a special dedicated department ha okay. huh. and we have special kind of test that is coming now to assess the motility of the stomach alone motility of small intestine so it is a evolving process right. uh, and one thing as a medical community we have figured out is it is very deep than what we thought i feel that as a medical community we owe an apology to all the patients in the last 40 years who probably had this problem <laughs> correct but because we didn't have the tests we dismissed or or, or the research or the research uh, uh, we didn't know mm, we didn't know and mm. uh, so their symptoms were dismissed so Great. huge apology yeah. to everybody <laughs> that happens in all the fields yes uh, but i feel like in gastroenterology yeah. um it's happening a lot more uh, the reason is that the gut is longer <laughs> and there are so many things that can go wrong <laughs> Yeah so the gut is the the gastroenterology is the uh, quickest branch to get subdivided into sub branches ah, hepatology correct. pancreas small intestine everything is now different correct yeah and then finally that will be coming that a gastroenterologist will be talking only about the anal sphincter alone right <laughs> i wonder Very what the specialization is called <laughs> this will be uh, that will be like anal enterology anal enterology <laughs> <laughs> so that's I mean, true actually to be honest yeah. you know i do general i do uh, general gastroenterology and then i do advanced endoscopy procedure mm-hmm. for you know pancreatic cancer patients right. i do ercps and all those things within the ercp ercp itself ercp is a invasive procedure right. that you go through the stomach look into the liver gall bladder and all those things that itself requires one more extra year of training yeah. okay even in that ercp we are talking about just pancreas alone just bile ducts alone just the cystic portion alone so that's so how each of that is one one year and more one one year or yeah. more more studies more research and everything yeah, yeah. in your practice mm-hmm. how many patients do you have to ask how well do you poop uh, i ask them the first question hmm. everyone they walk in i will don't even ask i don't even ask they will say i have an hour burn doctor pack yeah that is something that other specialties should also imbibe <laughs> because like we discussed before about sleep huh. everyone should ask whatever your specialty huh. they should ask do you sleep well the second question that they should ask is do you poop well <laughs> in fact i had See, this uh, one, huh. one, one thought process yes. so i have termed this word where sleep and poop is combined together huh. right so we call it as poop <laughs> poop is where you say okay if you're not sleeping well your poop is not going to work properly yeah. at the same time if you're not pooping well your sleep is not going to go properly so it's a scope okay. of the so are you pooping well yeah exactly wow. <laughs> are you pooping well which if you think about it is such a caring question to us exactly because if you ask somebody are you pooping well what you're actually asking is is your physical emotional mental state okay because all these things have to be okay for that one thing to happen so uh, when we both saw each other we asked how are you yeah when a, when a two psychiatrists meet each other you know what they ask what they say you are okay how am i 
<laughs> when a gastroenterologist ask a patient yeah. you say are you spooping are you pooping are you pooping? Yes. Are you, are you spooping? <laughs> that is a that is a love language in itself right <laughs> i hope that one day society evolves to a point where we can ask each other that question right <laughs> now suppose if uh, somebody is not pooping right uh-huh. are there things that they can do huh. to ensure that that happens uh-huh. okay so there is this uh, stool scale that anybody can uh, range their poop okay in terms of how it looks like Okay. Okay. It's a Bristol school stool scale. Okay. Maybe we can put a chart in the uh, yes, uh, streamline. So where uh, it ranges from you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in terms of you know how the your shape of the poop is. Okay. okay. If you're one and two and three, and then probably you're more on the constipated side. Okay. Four, five will be the normal, and six and seven will be the loose, watery loose things. Ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my mom is thinking that I'm a big scientist in America. Mm-hmm. All I'm looking at is stool. You're <laughs> oh, loose. Oh, you're hard. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Four out of seven, <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you're on four and five, yep. oh, okay, good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the other uh, miss normal mm-hmm. is or uh, or a myth is that you need to poop on a daily basis. Right. Ha. Huh. So you know, my my mom also says that my mom picks up the phone, doesn't ask you how are you. You're pooping okay, right? <laughs> Not only to me, now my kid is also. So she's I'm asking my. <laughs> is Arjun pooping okay? Is Adarva pooping okay? <laughs> So if you look at the Bristol stool scale, so you will know. Okay, so this is where the normal thing is. Okay, yeah. so daily pooping is not a requirement. Okay. It's very important to know. Daily pooping is not a requirement. Okay. Everybody is different. Mm. So that's why genes are different. That's why your bacteria is different. There are hundred trillion bacteria in your intestine. Hundred wow. trillion. That is one followed by fourteen zeros. If you line up all these bacteria from Earth, it will reach the moon. I'm not even making it up. That's how the distance is. Wow. Okay. Reach the moon. So that much amount of bacteria is there, and the even more surprising thing is everybody is unique. Right. Your bacteria is completely different from mine. Okay. So then imagine how will we can we say that okay, you know, you need to poop every day for everybody. So that's right. not the case. Okay. So what is more important is okay, how much are you pooping right from your once every two days? It's okay as long as it stays once every two days. So the regularity is more important. Ah, the frequency. Right. Uh, change in stool frequency. You are pooping once in two days. Right. Now you are pooping on a daily basis with a change in the stool ball movement to the diarrheal side. Then that's mm. a problem. Once in two days. Now we are once in four days, and your stool scale is like one and two. Then there is a problem. Right. So change in frequency and change in consistency. Ah, correct. That change is correct. what correct. Correct. matters. Exactly. Correct. So if you are regular, if you kind of know that. Okay, today is my poop day, huh. and it happens on time. Huh. Then your body is kind of running okay. Huh, correct. I have noticed that some there are some moments where everybody's poop frequency changes. Hmm. For example, uh, if you travel. are travel, huh. correct. When you go to a new place, hmm. the first two three days invariably hmm. that happens. Hmm. Uh, patients who get admitted to a hospital hmm. on the second day, none of them have pooped. Correct. And they all they're all worried about it. They ask, "Ki yar, bathroom nahi hua, stool nahi hua," because they they care about it. Right. But at the same time, something happens that their poop doesn't. It doesn't Come happen. Mm. Why is that? See, the, remember we talked about there's so many things that should go right to yes. get the bowel movement out. Yes. So one is hospitalized patient; they don't eat that much. Mm. The overall intake goes down. Right. Number two, they t- get pain medications. So um, the gut is extremely sensitive. That's why I brought up the teenage girl thing yeah. because that's where the pre-pubertal hormonal balance mm-hmm. is so important. Where they just have this fluctuation so many times, right? Exactly the same is happening with the gut as well. Right. Ah. Uh, so if you're stressed out, the gut goes very. If you're very happy, your gut is happy. Mm. What is happening in hospitalized patients? There is a stressful response that is going on, either from an infection or an inflammation, yeah. and the natural uh, thing is slow down. Your body is trying to protect you. Uh, mm-hmm. Slow down the motility, right. correct? And uh, that is why. Uh, and also on the top of it, any medication that you take, you look at the side effect. There is always GI. Yes. Nausea, vomiting, bloating. If you look at American yes. ad, if you say, "Oh, if uh, there is this Ozempic medication, yeah. okay," and then the side effects, the beautiful looking lady, and says, "Oh, I take Ozempic. I lost so much amount of weight." They spend like out of one minute ad, they spend fifty seconds on that 
beautiful looking lady losing weight yeah. in the last 10 second they say side effects include nausea vomiting abdominal diarrhea bloating diarrhea <laughs> and then they finish by saying including death <laughs> yeah <laughs> but most of the side effects is gi gi ah exactly. because the first thing that goes wrong whenever you are stressed out is your gut okay. and that's why they say go with your gut amazing so when you take painkillers huh. your gut bacteria changes uh motility changes motility changes ah. but when you take antibiotics yes your gut bacteria changes Absolutely. yeah big time what is the harm so that people understand what is the harm of taking antibiotics for your gut bacteria ha huh. so this is my favorite topic and i always say that covid was a pandemic that we didn't know that's going to come but now we know what is the next pandemic which is going to be antibiotic resistant bacteria where there is a bacteria in your body we give all these antibiotics nothing is going to happen and that bacteria will kill the patient mm. and that is going to happen in the next 5 to 10 years mm. because we have been rampantly using antibiotics without any discretion at all mm. and the reason what is happening is in the gut and the 100 trillion bacteria is a combination of both like a heroes and villains mm. together you know it's like a marvel movie mm. okay So we have uh, Thanos and we also have Hulk, Iron Man and all those things. But the problem is Thanos is bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so what is happening is we want all these good guys to be up. Yeah. Okay? We want the Iron Man to protect us and all those things. Let's say you are sleeping well, you are eating well, you are exercising well, you are doing everything right. Then Thanos is very small. Yeah. Okay? And all these good guys are very up. Yeah. High in content. So when you take an antibiotic... it just blast 50% of the bacteria all along 50% goes out ha huh. and not only good bad also goes huh. okay so that is why a very critical point is imagine this is a balance right. okay so if you are doing all things right you are like this 50% goes down here this 50% also goes down here yeah. but most of the time what's happening we are eating pizza we are eating processed foods we are not sleeping well most of the times all patients start over here right. and that is the first reason for them to have an infection to start with right because the immunity level goes down as well mm. so at that point of time when you give the antibiotics then what is happening whatever the good bacteria already you have it goes down goes 50% down even more even even more so then the bacteria dictates what it wants and uh, there is a popular movie i know it's called uh, chandramukhi mm. okay and there is this heroine actress called jyotika you need to put that in the thing as well yeah. okay <laughs> so uh, in that uh, song the jyotika actress has this eyes wide open and then they say oh kasmala all these necklaces and everything right in front of her yeah. and that's how bad bacteria tells you when it takes an antibiotic it absolutely loves it wow antibiotic yes give it to me <laughs> so antibiotic antibiotics affect the good bacteria much more uh it actually takes it destroys everything ah uh, but once you have the good bacteria less yes. and that environment is being controlled yes. by the bad good bacteria ha uh, and once the bad bacteria are more, more. they overpower uh. what what happens what is the downside of that everything is downside after that <laughs> it's all downhill it's from all there. downhill after that. See that is where the, we are talking about the molecular level. Right. Now there is I put a reel the saying that oh the reason for sudden heart attack is you know you were stressing out too much. Yeah. Right? That reel gets like 1.5 million views. So you know heart attack is people are interested yes. about it. Correct? Yes. Interested about it. Uh and then you know that's why cardiology is very attractive mm-hmm. and sexy in terms of field yeah. wise because everybody wants thinks their heart is the main organ. Yes. But I'm here to argue that your gut is the main organ because yeah. this bad bacteria plays like a shakuni mm. right there and then dictates what it wants to cause it wants to cause heart attack it will cause heart attack so what is happening is that it is at the molecular level this bad bacteria secreting all these hormones and chemicals yeah that is traveling along that highway that we are talking about to the brain antibiotics are being given indiscriminately mm. the reason it is given is because this awareness has not spread to the grassroots level of medicine yet 
to these days i believe that more and more doctors are aware but still nowhere close to what the awareness level should be uh, i'm not accusing the doctors hmm. my main problem is patients going hmm. into the pharmacy store and taking it themselves asking for i have throat pain give me some medication that the pharmacy guy says take azithromycin right okay you go to a good doctor he says take paracetamol it will go away in 3 days right this guy gives he comes back and says 3 days i can't wait you give something azithromycin he says that it'll go away in 72 hours and they were very happy both are same <laughs> <laughs> and people have this mental thing that only when you get antibiotic that doctor is a good doctor yes, ah. yes, yes. so that is i'm absolutely against that policy if indian government is watching this podcast that is the first thing that they should target Mm-hmm. because in us i know there are a lot of bad things in us but one good thing in us is that nobody can ever get an antibiotic without a doctor's prescription Description. doctors prescribing antibiotics is a second problem correct uh, I, that is an easier thing to educate correct, uh, correct. so that's not a big thing at all mm. it is the patient access to antibiotics has to be stopped so the patient's awareness has to increase absolutely every single person who is watching this should know that the antibiotics can be doing more harm than good and only when you absolutely need it correct correct it can be life saving correct so and then that comes to another problem where when there is a life saving infection requiring an antibiotic a patient is telling me i saw dr pal channel he said not to take antibiotic <laughs> correct so the answer to that is just trust your doctor yes ha you need to build the trust among your doctor okay don't keep on getting second opinion third opinion fourth opinion yes. this is not astrology okay <laughs> ha you get to you know I do still remember my marriage uh, astrologer. Yeah. Uh, she said that uh, my astrology maps are not matching with uh, my wife. Priya's. Uh, ah, yeah. Priya's uh, ma- map, right? Then I said, you know, I'll do a free colonoscopy for you. <laughs> <laughs> Now suddenly it matched. <laughs> <laughs> so no matter, like, I think the trust between the patient physician relationship Correct. has to be there. it has to be there yeah now you know you oh this doctor is saying this and if you go to the other doctor now I, i'm seeing a trend where the other doctors are telling to the patient that this doctor is wrong that yeah. i feel from medical community i know it doesn't happen that often but if even if it happens in pieces then the trust goes okay. away okay. that public face that we are putting in front of the patients that this is what it is there is no there's nothing wrong with scientists or specialists disagreeing with correct, each other correct correct there is of course sometimes evidence can seem counter counter to each other zone. that's okay mm. there are gray zones in correct. every science mm. but i feel that the way that the conversation should happen mm. is different correct correct and uh, uh, it's okay to get second opinion as well yes okay um but that has to be a context of a second opinion so let's say even that doctor per se is confused about the diagnosis right mm. i think this is what the diagnosis is um yeah. i have a educated guess that in that case you can get a second opinion okay. for a sore throat <laughs> <laughs> huh? for a sore throat tonsillitis it's so big it's obstructing the airway yeah. and the patient is prescribing antibiotics they call me i'm not even kidding i'm this not happen happen they sent a message to me on my email is saying that this doctor is giving me antibiotic this doctor doesn't know anything they are not watching your channel i said dude <laughs> don't get me into problem <laughs> so antibiotics yes it is indicated yeah. in a particular situation mm-hmm. so the best solution to this problem is trust your doctor get antibiotics only when prescribed by your doctor perfect mm. great message to send out now i have a very practical question for you mm. I want to make sure that my bowel movements are good. Hmm. I am healthy otherwise I have no problems. What can I do to ensure that bowel movements are good? Are there lifestyle habits that I can imbibe? So uh, your bowel movement is bad because of the gut bacteria. Okay. Uh, that is the bottom line. Okay. Okay. Because by the time you eat and it goes into the anal canal yeah it's 50 hours of tra- uh, travel transit transit wow. time 50 hours and who dictates that it's your brain mm. your brain dictates how fast it should contract mm. and uh, how much it should be absorbed when the brain is stressed it slows down when the bed is happy it activates so brain is a masterpiece that's why gastroenterology can never be equal to neurology <laughs> <laughs> I, i have a counterpoint to this but i will get to it <laughs> 
So yes, we are powerful as well. But maybe not as much as uh, you know. You guys are like the uh, Da Vinci, ah. uh, you know, Leonardo. So we are like the uh, orchestra conductor. Conductor, big master symphony. Yes, correct. We are all the, like small small people who's helping the master person <laughs> to do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> I always feel that if the body is the orchestra and the brain is the conductor, correct. What has the conductor done? He's just waving his hands. The actual work is being done by the orchestra. He has the band. He has the band. Ah, that's the key. That's a magic band. <laughs> only if the signal goes to these people. Then only. only ah, it will work. correct. Are there some foods that I can eat to make my bowel movements better? Correct. So your gut bacteria. We talked about gut bacteria as a critical for yes. bowel movement, right? So your gut bacteria loves fiber. Yes. Ah, so that's why I say in my video, it's always fiber. Fiber, fiber. Right. Um, I I released a video about the food in Air India, and I said that you know <laughs> it, it didn't go well. But <laughs> I said, oh, when the air hostess is giving instructions, please put your seat belt, please check your boarding pass, please also add fiber to your diet. <laughs> <laughs> to the meal served in Air India. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, fiber is the key. the fiber so increasing fiber in your diet increases your bowel movement quality correct what are the foods that reduce bowel movement quality same thing lack of fiber lack of fiber low fiber so low fiber would be your all your white things right uh, all your maida all your uh, white bread mm. all your white rice and i'm not against all this mm. it's okay as long as you include fiber in the other uh, oh i'm mm. sorry i'm against maida though But huh. I'm not against white rice. Okay, so maida would mean so biscuits, huh. pao, pao, bread, bread, all of these things. Mm. So these things will slow down your correct bowel movement. Correct. So as a matter of fact, we in cholera, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, in cholera, thirty, forty years ago, they used to give. What do they give? I've read this. Ah, uh, what do they give? They, they give, give rice. Rice, yeah, yeah. They give bread. They give toast. It's called brat diet. Right. Because they didn't have any medication to give, because people were dying like crazy. Right. The only way to decrease the cholera is by giving white stuff. Yeah, I heard about maida being called as the glue of the gut. Ha! Huh. Because it just glues things together. Absolutely. And it reduces gut motility. Correct. Uh, but of course, everything is not so black and white. Some maida in the diet, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, if it's uh, enough fiber, it is in yes, yes. Mm. It's individualized. It's individualized. Mm. Uh. Other nutrients. We talked about fiber a lot. Mm -hmm. Are there other nutrients that also affect gut motility? M more than the nutrients, I think the lifestyle. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. So lifestyle. So nutrients. When you're talking about, you know, carb, protein, and fats, yeah. correct? So yeah. your uh, gut actually doesn't care yeah. how much amount of protein, carb, and fat that you're taking, as long as it has the basic protocol and the bandwidth to handle it. Yeah. and the bandwidth comes from the brain gut axis and the brain gut axis is given the given the bandwidth with your lifestyle changes including the wonderful thing that you always talk about sleep sleeping drink more water to poop better this is true correct how much water minimum 2 liters per day okay mm. and that will automatically make everything else slightly better, better. Mm -hmm. it again it depends correct so if it is a milder constipation patients mm -hmm. all they want to do is to increase the water intake and then increase the fiber intake right. you're good yeah some moderate constipation where the motility is you know it's not working at all then you will need some kind of additional help in addition right. to hydration so laxatives pro anti uh, it, yes it has a role hmm. it has a role uh in that particular patient who is actually having the change in consistency and change in frequency of the right. stool not just because you didn't poop for one day right mm -hmm. so i have met a patient who had laxative addiction yeah so they couldn't go Correct. without taking a laxative Correct. and this has been going on for, for years, years. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um and we tried to wean him off this mm -hmm. and uh, it was very difficult, very difficult it yeah. took almost 6 7 months before he could Correct. a lot of people smoke and go to the huh. toilet hmm. and they swear that without smoking they cannot uh, they cannot poop so even when they are trying to quit because of this one thing they will get back to smoking how common is this and what should they do about it um you know in my practice it's not that common in us no uh, it's not that common in us 
uh, but extremely common among patients who have migrated from india right. extremely common you know yeah. uh, so i think it is just a neurodevelopmental mechanism that they have created throughout mm. the years mm. throughout the years like a habit that they habit uh, and nicotine might have a slight laxative effect but not to a significant effect that you know uh, it is really creating a bar problem mm. uh, nicotine is a is a very interesting uh, chemical mm. you know there is a condition called ulcerative colitis yes. okay where there is an inflammation of the colon where your body thinks that colon doesn't belong to you mm. and it starts biting your colon and then starts inflammation in colon okay so when you smoke actually nicotine prevents inflammation mm. okay so what happens is a patient smokes and ulcerative colitis a patient doesn't have any problem at all and then uh, primary care physician says stop smoking yeah stop smoking two weeks later starts to have blood in stool mm. so nicotine has some calming effect on the ulcerative colitis we just don't know why okay does it mean that you know people who are having ulcerative colitis should go out and smoke, smoke. absolutely yeah. not yeah. but we do give nicotine supplements sometimes mm. i like patches and everything to see whether that is helping a little bit doesn't help okay. that much but sometimes we do okay um so smoking and bowel movement we still don't know the exact correlation but more likely it's just a uh, neurodevelopmental mechanism right uh, so there's nothing of... that smoking increases bowel frequency ha huh, not that much yeah got mm. it got it uh there's a lot of connection between emotions and correct. bowel movement correct right so to the point where uh, somebody who is feeling anxious somebody who is feeling sad they will find that their bowel movements have changed can things like meditation or working on your mental health can they affect bowel movements uh, directly yeah, yeah. That, that that is the most important thing <laughs> it affects very directly directly mm. proportional and uh, you know in gastroenterology literature there are two kinds of ibs like irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea mm. irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, constipation. so right. there are like two different categories right so most of the times when you're anxious it's usually diarrhea hmm. that's why you know if you're trying to give a talk or when you are going to do any stressful event like an exam like, like an exam so people go to the bathroom uh, right or if you want to take a decision and then they say you know i would let me use the restroom uh, and then uh, so that's why the your instinct is clogged with your gut that's what they call gut instinct right, uh, right. <laughs> like, a lot of people will get good ideas while they are sitting on right. the <laughs> toilet and my theory has always been that when you are stressed out going to the toilet is actually like a parasympathetic action <laughs> yes so you'll calm down there And you so you feel calmer correct. and then you can make logical decisions correct uh, one thing i always tell my patient is that don't spend more than like 5 minutes on the party <laughs> and especially if you have little kids you will come to know eventually yeah. <laughs> that might be the only place that you will get some kind of solace yeah. <laughs> it'll keep knocking up you're not coming out hey shh i'm in a very important business <laughs> <laughs> so people who scroll while on their on their toilet uh, is this something that is happening more and more oh it, the most common cause of constipation is thanks to iPhones and androids <laughs> why So what happens is you remember I told you that how important from the brain to the sphincter muscle correct yes. so when you lift weights you have li- you you must have heard this where oh you're doing biceps yeah so you say that uh, they think the mind muscle coordination yes you think about the bicep. you think about the muscle so you yeah. lift the muscle the personal trainer will tell me oh think about the biceps see how it is contracting yeah. oh see how it is relaxing he'll be more excited than me <laughs> i said you tone it down <laughs> it's okay it's only biceps <laughs> yeah. so similar to that the same thing you know right. you need to focus the uh, mind muscle connection right. and when you were scrolling basically that connection is gone right. if you were bowel movement and your brain get access is good to start mm. with it's not a big deal mm. but what happens is in due course of time this mind muscle connection is lost with age with repetition of this practice where you keep on scrolling you spend like 10 and 15 minutes on the body right. so then the brain doesn't know what you're trying to do you're right. trying to focus on the reel right if you're watching my reel it's okay 
because you're anyway talking about that ha huh. <laughs> any other real no watch okay <laughs> Right. So uh, you were scrolling and what happens is the yeah. signal such a cooking reels you should not watch correct <laughs> <laughs> uh, the signal goes down it has right. been proven on uh, research as well okay and right. when the signal goes down the strength of the connection goes down then that's where you slowly start developing oh. constipation slowly oh because your brain stops associating that as a place to to oh, oh, ah. and it's actually a place to just watch Instagram or correct. Reels. So similar how you say, you know, bed is used only for sleep. Yes. Potty should be used only for potty. Right. Mm. So your brain, if once you lose that connection, now where do you go? Ha. Exactly. And then you know it doesn't happen right away, right. and that's why people get away with it. Right. Uh, but if you have a slow connection to start with, it'll right. hit you right away. Right. So I tell my patients with all my constipation patients, the first thing is keep your phone outside away. the bathroom. Away. Mm. So I remember. uh my in in kerala and all people used to take their newspapers and say ha now i'm wondering that uh, they used to come out after half an hour or right so. i wonder how much of it is just because they were engrossed in the newspaper and how much of it is constipation <laughs> that's true it's absolutely true as well yeah they are engrossed for a gross thing <laughs> <laughs> i can see where the stand up comedy comes from doctor ah. <laughs> so we you we spoke about gut microbiome ha and how s- some bacteria are good some bacteria are bad mm. maybe there are some people whose bacteria are very good now that means that their poop is has something special yeah fecal transplant is a thing that's come up in the last 10 15 years correct have you have you ever had that done to a patient to me not to oh, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the patient to a patient we do it all the time really we do it all the time in As which a, conditions uh, uh so there are a lot of research conditions that they are exploring the benefit okay. but the only proven condition is a condition called c difficile colitis okay. which is a bacterial infection which is a bad bacteria oh. that is populating the colon we are taking good bacteria from a healthy donor infusing into the intestine yeah. i do colonoscopies right. okay okay i'll tell you the process how it happens yes so there is a healthy donor like you ha huh. okay you go in huh. you submit a stool specimen right we take the stool specimen and you can, can you call yourself an organ donor after that uh, you can call yourself organ donor not an organ but you can call yourself a donor donor but right. i will be the transplant surgeon right that's a good pickup line i'm a transplant surgeon <laughs> and what did you do <laughs> i'm a transplant surgeon let's just keep it that way <laughs> right when you submit a stool specimen we what we do is we take a blender okay and then we mix that stool specimen into obviously we test you all for you know hiv yeah. all those infections yeah. negative just like blood just donation. like blood donor exactly like blood donor ah blood donor ah. and then you know we blend it and then we give it with a uh, liquid part yes okay and we do a which contains all those all good those bacteria. good bacteria right. we are hoping it's a good bacteria yes okay uh, because it's a healthy donor right, right. so that's why so then uh, we do a colonoscopy so colon has like four different parts correct like right colon ascending yes. middle colon yes. transverse uh, left colon is descending and the last one is the recto sigmoid so four different parts okay. so we do the ca- take the camera go through the and it's like a playing a video game yeah. go right go left Yeah, like pacman ah like pacman only thing there's no gps <laughs> <laughs> and then you go there and then you go into the right side of the colon right here oh all the way to the cecum all the way to the end of the large intestine right ah and then in, if possible you can get into the small intestine as well and then you spray this okay uh solution that we create right and that is where the transplant happens so you want to put it into the small intestine if possible as because that's possible. where the gut bacteria Correct. Correct. That's is. the maximum that we can go up to a colonoscopy. If we can go even deep, we can even go deep. Okay. Uh. And then what happens? Th- that those bacteria we are hoping will populate the. Ha. Huh. So what happens is when we go in, yeah. Because we do this only for C. difficile colitis, the colon looks very red and angry. Right. Extremely red and angry. You'll be surprised after the transplant, within even a week, all the angriness is calmed down. so that's how it's powerful tool wow. um but it is a very it's like an ai mm. it's very nascent stage we still don't know we still don't know what are the other problems that's going to cause 
if the good gut bacteria can cure this let's say that patient that person is a very anxious person yeah and this guy is very calm, calm. will that turn into an anxiety that's what the research is going along so can a uh, can the good bacteria of the poop of a calm person make an anxious person calm we've seen that in mice we've yeah. seen that in mice it's possible that But personalities can change absolutely which brings me to a very important question and one that has given me existential nightmares sometimes we have trillions of bacteria in our gut mm. all the way to the mouth mm. and then our skin starts mm. we have trillions of bacteria on our skin mm. right all our propioni yeah, bacteria yeah. skin microbiome and skin microbiome mm. and there is a whole vaginal microbiome correct there is nasal microbiome correct. there is ear microbiome hair microbiome there's even conjunctival <laughs> microbiome because the reason is there's 5 billion bacteria right more i mean more than uh, billions of bacteria right um uh, that's there is a saying that the number of bacteria in your hand is more than the number of people <laughs> people on the earth <laughs> there are so many bacteria on us uh-huh. and in us uh-huh. and around us mm. that uh, sometimes i feel that we are a sandwich mm. with bacteria outside us and the bacteria inside us mm. and we are just a little sandwich between the two absolutely because bacteria came into life before us yes they were here first first so whenever a baby is born they are just pouncing upon for real estate wow our new real estate is there what a vision right right so basically you need to absolutely make sure i mean not absolutely but you need to make sure that iron man comes in first and not thanos hmm the first year of life is very crucial very crucial and that is why antibiotics in the first year of life is even yes. more critical oh. than when you were 30 40 years yes so a child getting pneumonia and getting antibiotics infection is so much worse in like an infant mm. versus say a 5 year old 5 year old so i think th- this is where the controversy happens and this is where i want to be very clear that you know you should take this with a grain of salt mm. where you know pediatric practice is extremely difficult you know why because parents are emotional of course right they will say especially parents from indian origin is like you know you, nothing can happen to my child if you want you kill me ha uh, anything happens to my child i will never leave you alone right yeah. so that's the mentality kind of thing yeah. uh which is a good thing you know of we course. just poured love we don't see this much amount of love in western absolutely not wow yeah absolutely not yeah, i mean our emotions are like not even comparable uh, to a point that you know when a patient is dying there will be like 100 people of indian population outside yeah. an indian patient room yeah there will not be a single person outside an american patient really i i should cannot generalize but probability is higher right mm, probably that's the way society is structured that's how, yeah correct Mm. yeah the society structure yeah because we poor emotions we poor yeah. uh, the point i was trying to make was let's say if i say no absolutely if you try to avoid antibiotics in the first year of life as much as possible but if the baby has pneumonia which needs antibiotics yeah you should also be okay that yeah. yes you know this is you this it ah this is right and then i will repopulate it later with good bacteria ah. later correct the point that i was making is pneumonia at 2 months of age is so much worse than pneumonia at 5 years of age ha huh. that was what i meant Correct. because of course antibiotics to have to be given Correct. and the reason that our um, yeah, yeah, yeah. life span mm. is increases because I antibiotics see, see. are correct correct, correct, uh, correct but correct. It, the unfortunate thing is that it can do more damage correct. at that young age correct. that's what i mean mm. um when you talked about the gut being the second brain mm. and i want to sort of end this conversation <laughs> with this one thing which is that i read that when life started huh. on earth with unicellular and then Correct. multicellular organisms the first or some some of the first organisms were hydra the fungi oh, yeah, yeah. right mm. and th- these organisms had developed the f- most primitive form of the nervous system mm. which were called nerve nets mm. 
and the nerve nets had two main roles mm. one is that to take in uh pieces of nutrition mm. from outside mm. and it had this mild form of peristalsis and then it would take it out uh this is the earliest form wow. of the nervous system wow which is what eventually Ever evolved became the gut wow and after the gut formed there was shoot outs that or offshoots that became the brain ha uh. so while today we think of us as seeing uh, from our brain actually the gut is the first brain Wow. Evolutionarily speaking, wow. the gut came first, and the brain came later. Oh my God! Wow. So when I read this, I got another existential crisis because I felt that all this time we were thinking of us as the brain Correct. and the gut being separate. Correct. But what if we are from the gut? Wow. And the brain is. Wow. wow! It should be gastro neurology then. Wow! <laughs> so since you are my guest here, I would happily give that honor. Gastro neurologist. Gastro neurologist. <laughs> <laughs> wow! That's that's so deep. Uh, wow! Doctor wow. Paul, um, any parting words to everybody on um, gut health and like you know three things that they should do every day in order to have a good gut life. Right. So I say three Fs. Three Fs. Three okay. Fs. Okay. One is fiber. Second one is fermentation, fermented foods. Okay. Okay. And third one is fasting. Really. If you have three Fs, you will have one F more, which is fun, <laughs> and you will not have the other F, which is farting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so three Fs for one more F, and to avoid one F. One F. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great take-home message. <laughs> Thank you so much. Next time we will talk about fasting. I would love to get into it, but I know that that's a whole that's a half whole, an yeah. hour conversation, Absolutely, one hour conversation. Yeah. We will do that on another day. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. Super. Thank Absolute you so much. Absolute pleasure to have you. Absolutely. Here. I had Cheers, so everyone. much. Cheers, everyone. Uh, find Dr. Paul's videos on Instagram or on YouTube. They are fantastic. <laughs> If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. Like this video so that you can more people will find about us. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.